John Capote's intentions were to trade with Asia, but is that really what he did? For hundreds of years, trade between Europe and Asia was good along the Silk Road, trading spices, silk, and possibly gold. Turkey controlled the land route to Asia, and Portugal controlled the seas around Africa. If others found a new route to Asia, they would become rich. In 1492, Christopher Columbus was looking when he found the Caribbean, though he thought it was India. John Cabot wanted to try north past Iceland and Greenland to China. He convinced Henry, King Henry VII to sponsor him, and the king issued letters pendant, giving John Cabot the right to set sail in 1497. He sailed and hid an island and claimed the land for England, also reporting the fishing was scooping up the fish by bucketfuls, which pleased the king because it was a valued dish. French, English, and Portuguese fishers heard about these fish, and by 1500s, fishing fleets visited regularly. Fishing there was danger because of the meeting of warm and cold currents causing fog and also icebergs, though it was worth the risk. It was too cold to stay in Newfoundland all year, so they salted in, sailed in during spring, and returned in the fall. It was, it was 20 days from Europe with no freezers. They had to either salt or dry the fish. The Portuguese and French had cheap salt from the Fran France's west coast, so they salted their cod. The English had to spend summers in small camps in Newfoundland, drying the cod. Relations between Europeans and the First Nations were good, up until Europeans kidnapped some of them and sold them into slavery. Ultimately, John Cabot's venture to find a new route to Asia led to a whole sequence of unfolding events that changed our history.